learned to fly at age 14 from a family friend named Ken Collier in a Piper J3 Cub. And uh, you can't solo at 14. It lost, at least not in a powered airplane. So closer to my 16th birthday, uh, Chuck Irvin, the same man that taught my dad how to fly, we got together and he refined a lot of, the, uh, of my piloting skills and taught me a few more things. And I soloed my grandfather's 1928 Travel Air 4000 biplane on my 16th birthday. My dad and I, he was always going to teach me aerobatics and we just never got around to it. We went out a couple of times in the family super decathlon and we worked mainly on slow rolls. Dad always said that if you could master a slow roll, you could master anything because a slow roll is the basis of most aerobatic maneuvers. We worked on that a couple of times, but I never really got very good at it. Then, of course, when my dad passed away, I went out and I used the skills that I had developed by flying model airplanes and the little bit that he taught me about slow rolls and taught myself aerobatics. For those that don't know, the control inputs on an RC transmitter are the same as the uh, control inputs on a full-scale airplane. It takes the same stick and rudder movements to make the little airplane do the same maneuver that it does for the big airplane. So the transition is really just orienting yourself uh, to be inside the airplane and experience the G-load as opposed to being on the ground watching it. It was a lot of fun you know, figuring all that out. I wouldn't recommend that for anybody else though, you know, because it's, uh, at the same time, it's easy to get in trouble. Most rewarding experience for me is when somebody comes up to me, especially when I'm flying this airplane, and they've come up to me and they either tell me a story about how they saw my dad perform somewhere way back when and it just took their breath away what he could do with the airplane or they met him or they knew him and they used to fly models together. It's, you know, all the stories that dad made sure I never heard when I was growing up because, you know, he didn't want to be a bad influence. I'm now hearing from people that, are, uh, that I meet on the air show circuit you know, about uh, different things that they used to do with airplanes. And uh, I'm hearing a lot of really good stories, you know, a lot of uh, uh, things that my dad did for other people that I never knew about or things that, uh, experiences that he had or how people based on the experience they had with him uh, changed their life and went and did something different and it's working out great for him and all that. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. You know, I think my dad and I were uh, becoming very close before I lost him, but uh, you know, now that he's gone, it's kind of a it's kind of a way to hang on to what we had. Getting to fulfill some of these goals that I've set set forth as far as uh, continuing that tradition and that heritage. Old barnstorming acts are getting fewer and further between, and these older airplanes, more and more of them are getting parked because of the cost of fuel and maintenance. And it's the, the type of aviation that I was privileged enough to grow up with is it's a dying art form. And, uh, you know, being able to continue uh, down that same road, it's a real privilege. The Beach 18 was, all, was my ultimate goal for um, continuing Dad's legacy. Uh, it's the airplane that put him on the map and kind of put him at the forefront of uh, air show entertainment. And though he flew several airplanes over the years, that's the one everybody remembers him for. But the airplane itself is a dream to fly. And when, I, when we lost Dad, um, there was a, a real panic to try to uh, a sell of a, a lot of the airplanes. We as a family decided that if there was one airplane out of the whole lot that we could keep, it would be the beach. My parents' first date was going to the airport to watch the Twin Beach mail plane start up and take off and go out on its mail run. When they got married, my dad's first job, he relocated himself and my mother up to South Dakota and he, his first aviation job was flying night air mail to Beach 18. And then they moved to Malden, Missouri and did the same thing again. And then when he moved back to Arkansas, where, where he uh, was originally from, 
he had the, enough money to buy one of his own. And he hauled freight in that airplane uh, till I was 12 or 13 years old. And when the freight market dried up on Twin Beaches, he moved the airplane he, over into his air show lineup, put smoke on it and, uh, and started doing air shows with it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. And that was the story of his life. We always had a Beach 18 in the hangar. There was, uh, he always had one that he was hauling freight in, one he was doing air shows in, and a couple of others that he was buying and selling, you know, horse trading. We just knew that this was the airplane we wanted to keep. Well, unfortunately, the, uh, the way the situation ended up, any airplane that we kept was gonna have to pay its way. Based on that, my grandfather, when I, when I talked to him about continuing to do air shows in this airplane, he said I was crazy. He said, you know, there was only one Bobby Yunk and there's, you know, that, uh, that has come and gone. Uh, there'll never be another beach on the air show circuit. You're dreaming. My grandfather and one of his good friends who belonged to the uh, Beach Historical Society or Beach Museum over in Tennessee had put together a plan to purchase this airplane to put in their museum. And uh, they took it over to the beach party that's every October over there and by request it was left in that museum and when they came home and didn't bring the airplane back the rest of us were just crushed. We thought we'd never see it again. After my first air show in, uh, in November of 2005 in the decathlon my grandpa had gotten word that you know that I didn't know what I was doing he wasn't able to see the show but he had uh, heard from others that, you know, I, I did in fact have an ability to, you know, at least safely do this. And so he offered me the keys to his Travel Air Mystery Ship replica, which is a, it's a low wing air racer, a very historical airplane. Anyway, he says, well, if you're going to do, if you're going to be doing this, uh, that airplane's sitting down in the museum, it's not doing anything. Why don't you add that to your lineup? Maybe you can sell some shows in it. We went down New Year's Eve and uh, got that airplane, brought it back from the museum. Well, because it hadn't flown in several years due to a very extensive annual and some bad weather, I only had about two weeks to learn how to fly the airplane and go get my waiver in it before my first uh, air show. In March of that year, I, I performed in the airplane as well as the decathlon, and Grandpa was there for that show and he said that that was the most graceful display he's ever seen in an airplane and he had a complete change of heart and not only did he go get the Twin Beach and bring it back home from the museum but he personally paid the banknote off on the airplane so it, it, the airplane is now secure I don't have to fly it anymore it's just it's a privilege to fly it at this point but you know if we ever get tired of doing air shows with it we can stand around and look at it because it's not going anywhere.